This portion of the news brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. The era of Cleola Hamilton has officially ended as nurses elect a new group of executives. Ms. Hamilton, who served as president of the Nurses Union for more than a decade, did not offer herself for re-election. She faced heavy criticism after refusing to step down as the union's president after being elected to parliament. Some saw it as a conflict of interest. During a press conference today, newly elected president Janet Kelfani said a new contract tops her agenda. As soon as the economy picks up, we can get back to the table and continue and complete that negotiation. Some of the plans that we have on the drawing board is training. Um, and of course, yes, we are looking closely at recruiting and retaining our Bahamian nurses. On March 18th, the nurses here and on the family islands elected Kalfani, three trustees, an assistant treasurer and treasurer, an assistant general secretary and general secretary, and second and first vice president Kimberly Josie and Audrey Williams. Trade Union Congress President Obi Ferguson says the umbrella union stands behind the new officers 100%. I know the officers who are involved and I can assure those nurses who may not be totally familiar and you have a group who selected a very strong, energetic group to take this union to greater heights. And there need not be a challenge in the Supreme Court because the wishes of the workers, the wishes of the nurses were indeed done. The Department of Immigration is exploring the possibility of acquiring a new smart e-gate system, paving the way for faster and more efficient movement of the growing number of international passengers moving through the Linden Piddling International Airport. Foreign Affairs and Immigration Minister Fred Mitchell said countries like the United Arab Emirates and United States are already using the e-gate system, which makes entry an entirely electronic process and eliminates face-to-face -face interaction. When you enter the country the first time, you put biometrics, they scan your eyes, your fingers, your passport, uh, the visa, and that goes into a database. When you come back the next time, all you have to do is just uh, punch it in. If it lets you through, you're fine. If not, then you go see an immigration officer. And you will see that this is happening also in the States when you're coming to Miami. And we've asked the U.S. about putting it here in Nassau as well for the outbound. But that's it. That's the direction we're headed. The director is putting together a unit for the next generation of electronic uh, processing, uh, which, we, which we're going to start over the next year so that we can move to that. Minister Mitchell was speaking to Rotarians of Southeast Nassau today. Meantime, he admitted his ministry is struggling with how to get a grip on the long processing times for work permits, which on average take about three months to process. I'm also thinking of amending the law to provide for two things, an immigration reserve uh, in the way that you have a police reserve, and also immigration brokers, so that you'd have licensed brokers in the way you have customs brokers, and they can do all of that preparatory stuff before the applications come in. Well, blue candles were shining brightly yesterday as millions around the world and here at home celebrated Autism Awareness Day, a disability that has affected the lives of one, of one out of every 88 children. Now, last night, officials of the Resources and Education for Autism-Related Challenges, or REACH, hosted a special ceremony to not only celebrate and raise awareness on the impact of autism, but to kick off Child Protection Month. Father of an autistic child, Prime Minister Perry Christie, says he strongly supports the efforts displayed by REACH to educate the public about autism and is now in a position to assist the organization with the resources it needs to move ahead. Work to support reach. Sometimes it's thankless you feel you're not reaching the people you should reach. But why don't you find a way to come and sit down with me and persuade me to be prejudiced in your favor? Look at what I give the Athletic Association for Carifta. Ask me how much I gave them as Prime Minister. Then say, just come and give me one-tenth of that. Think if we could work together 
I'm sure we could lean on Mr. Dinkel to help us lead a charge to put up some kind of facility for our kids. Let's start by your coming to me and saying, give me the land. President of REACH, Mario Carey, who is also the father of an autistic child, says while it's expensive to raise a child with autism here in the Bahamas, he's pleased that parents of autistic children are getting more involved in the program. Ending in June of last year, REACH four-month free education series saw 94 participants. Ending in February of this year, the four-month series showed 118 participants. We are proud when the number of participants keeps increasing. It makes our awareness and our efforts are making a difference. It means that our awareness and efforts are making a difference. It's set to hit the stage this coming weekend, a wedding in Nassau. It's a local production being put on by an aspiring group of actors and filmmakers. The play chronicles the lives of an interesting bunch of individuals and centers around an Indian bride and Bahamian groom. Needless to say, the play touches on the very controversial issue of marrying across cultures. Without giving too much, writer Dario Portia gave us a brief synopsis of the play and talks a little bit more about what viewers can expect on back-to-back -back nights of the play beginning this Friday. The play basically is a dramatic comedy. Um, what I did in the play when I wrote it is I wanted to highlight some of the stuff that's happening on the streets on a daily basis and I wanted to really shed some light on the situation to give people a sense of awareness as to all is not lost here in Bahamas, that you can take a bad situation and I guess you can say make fun of it in, in a good way. Now, the play which will be held at COB's Performing Arts Center is not a traditional one. It's a lot more interactive and will require audience participation in a number of instances. Members of the cast are encouraging all Bahamians to come out and support the production, which is also for a greater cause. To me, what made me start to be a part of the play and something that, you know, what I like most about the play is that we're giving back. It's an opportunity for us to give back, you know. It's not every day you see a group of young people assemble themselves to do something positive in the community. You know, part of our proceeds will go to the building and children home. My passion for getting involved with the project was when I first met Dario, I could see in him that he had a passion for writing. I always used to call him a thespian in the making. And me and him got together and we said, well, let's do a project and we'll do it on a mass scale. So we've been collaborating on a project thus far from October of last year until now. Tell us about the quality of your product. Well, as you see, standing beside me is some of the cast from the show. So I believe in them and we've been at this for some time now. So. I think we're gonna we're gonna really have you laughing from start to finish. All right, we're well still to come in the Bahamas tonight. More highlights from the Carifta Track and Field Championships. You're watching the Bahamas tonight. This portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. This is your Royal Fidelity Business News. I'm LaDawn Davis. The Caribbean Growth Forum will take center stage in the capital tomorrow and stakeholders from the World Bank, Caribbean Development Bank and the International Development Bank are hoping to map out a number of growth development strategies that will economically inspire some 15 Caribbean countries. Minister of State for Investments Kalis Rose said during the launch of the forum today that it will allow dialogue between public and private enterprises but will also have a great impact on economic recovery. Meantime, Rose says the forum will focus primarily on key areas like investment, climate, logistics, connectivity, skills and productivity. That forum begins at 10 a.m. tomorrow at Super Club's Breezes. And the Associated Press announced today that Apple is expected to release its latest iPhone model before this summer this year. Executives of Apple Incorporated are now in the process of creating a cheaper model that will boost its marketing shares and device production globally. However, the company says it strives to make the best products, not the cheapest ones. And that's a look at your Royal Fidelity Business News. I'm LaDawn Davis.